Okay, so I won't say too much uh, about the, the Okra project. Uh, Massimo already covered most of it, so just to put it into perspective, Okra is an EOS project and Okra is tasked with establishing the portfolio of commercial services that will be available through EOS. So in order to do that, Okra will establish procurement vehicles for two service types, general cloud infrastructure as a service, plus everything that the hyperscalers typically put on top of that, and commercial earth observation services, like the ones that uh, Planetech is offering. And then following this, um, we have funding available to stimulate the adoption of these services. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And thirdly, Okra's interest, by doing these two activities, so the stimulation of the adoption and the establishment of the portfolio of commercial services, Okra will develop the capability for procuring and brokering commercial services in the EOSC. So the long-term vision here is that for you as a scientist, there will be this EOSC that will have both community offered services and commercial services. And then it should have a rich portfolio of commercial services that help you uh, do the best research you can, the fastest you can. So zooming in, focusing on the Okra adoption funding. So we have a total pot of about 9.5 million euros available and it's roughly equally split between the two service types. Um, as you can see, we have different waves and today we're talking mostly, we're talking about the wave two and three. So the distinguishing factor here is that the wave two is 100% uh, Okra funded. The wave three is a co-funding wave. So as you can see, we have more money available to co-fund than we have to 200% uh, fund. Um, I should add that we have a certain degree of flexibility to transfer budget between the waves, um, all, all um, according to the, uh, the projects that we get in, right? Um, so we can say that the wave two is targeting research projects at individual institutions, wave three research projects at groups of institutions that can use OCRA funding to increase their scale, right? So the co-funding is meant for you're doing something and you can use the OCRA funding to do more of that and thus increase the impact of your research. And why that matters, um, I'll get back to that later on. Um, important dates and for this call and future calls. Um, we currently have an earth observation uh, adoption call open. That's been open for a while. The application deadline is Monday the 30th of November. Um, we then use some time to evaluate the proposals and anyone who has submitted a project should latest by the 29th of January know whether or not they've been awarded. Um, subsequent calls for Earth observation are planned uh, middle of February to open and somewhere around July, although I have to point out that we are going to make an attempt to pull that last call forward. <clears throat> so quick look at the process. So if you submit a, a project, what can you expect? Um, after you've submitted the project proposal, OCRA does the evaluation. We have an external advisory board that reviews our intended awards. So the OCRA project does the evaluation, but we have to defend our choices. And the function of that is oversight of funding allocation, right? So we have to ensure that our funding allocation is done in a balanced, fair, transparent, and non-discriminatory way. And our external advisory board helps us achieve that goal. And I've included the link in case you're curious to see who's on that advisory board. So we, we have a nice, um, a nice subset. We have a nice representation of various disciplines and types of organization in the European uh, research area on our advisory board to help us with that. For projects that get awarded with OCRA funding, um, we will then engage with a memorandum of understanding. And then OCRA, together with the awarded project, uh, together will establish the detailed service requirements needed for you to use Earth Observation Services. And we need to do that together because OCRA then conducts the actual procurement of the services. Your project then uses those services and what OCRA gets out of it is a showcase. 
and hopefully continued uh, adoption of those services with other types of budget. Um, so Okra will prepare, will make a showcase out of the use of earth observation services that you do. Uh, and we expect awarded projects to assist us in that. Um, something to point out, um, there's a likelihood that you've never heard of something like this, but there are different ways to procure services. And the Okra services are being procured through something that is called a dynamic purchasing system. I will not say too much about that, but there is one attribute that is, um, that is interesting from your perspective. And that is that in a dynamic purchasing system, unlike a framework contract, you can have a continuous inflow of suppliers. So that means, so with a framework contract, you basically lock the market and the suppliers you can buy from for a fixed period in time. With a dynamic purchasing system, you don't do that. So that means that your choice of suppliers um, is way more flexible than it could otherwise have been. Um, what Okra is after is uh, bigger research relevant projects that really show how the research community, um, no, that really sh show the research community how Okra's portfolio of services can help you achieve great research outcomes. And what is a great research? So, so how, how that works, that can be different things, right? It could be that thanks to these services, you can do new things that you couldn't do before. It could be that you're able to do things faster or for with less money or with higher quality. Um, it could allow smaller groups to do larger undertakings that before perhaps uh, were beholden to larger institutions with a similar large support apparatus. Um, with online services, uh, that capability is much more democratized. And it could allow nimble budgets to achieve great things. And there's probably a whole bunch of advantages that we haven't thought of. So what we're looking for is inspiring showcases, right? Um, even though 9.5 million uh, sounds like a lot, um, it's no more than the annual central IT budget of Oslo Uni. There are thousands of uh, research institutions in Europe, and we want to make a imp significant impact on the way of thinking in the wider community. And for that, we need inspiring showcases. A um, couple of words on eligibility and what the funding is for. Um, to keep it very practical and very short, um, all member institutions of national research and educational networks in the green countries, they're eligible for funding. Uh, we have some leeway um, if you're not, but the, uh, the key thing to remember is that this is funding for uh, not-for-profit research. So by and large, that means academic community, research institutes, typically that type of space. Um, in the other project call, um, we've seen collaborations between research institutions and commercial institutions, and that could of course be very fine, right? Um, but there needs to be a not-for-profit research organization involved in that that preferably is then a member of the NREN. Um, the funding can be used for purchases from suppliers in the Okra procurement vehicle. So when Planetech becomes part of the Okra dynamic purchasing system, you can buy services from Planetech. Um, the money is for the services as such, the money is for consulting services in support of using these services, and the money can also be used for infrastructure as a service in support of using the Earth Observation Services. What's not covered by OCRA funding is your own time. So what that means is that we're kind of assuming that you already have something interesting that you want to do, where uh, OCRA can help you do that in a different way using someone else's services. What we want to know from you in your application, um, we're going to ask you for a short description of your research project. So this is, this is where you basically sell your project to us, right? You have to demonstrate that you have a compelling uh, project ongoing and explain how it benefits from a look on the earth from the sky. Could be any research field, so it's definitely not limited to uh, earth sciences. Uh, it could be health, it could be investigating pollution levels in European cities, I don't know, could be many different things. 
Um, but what we're looking for is research that um, that is inspiring for other people and that makes it easy for other people to see, right, that research project is doing this using these services. Ah, but that means I can also do something like that. Um, second really important thing that we're interested in is how will these Earth observation services, based on Copernicus data, support your project activities and improve your research outcomes? Right? So you're doing research, thanks to using these services, you can do something better or different than you could before. And that you have to make clear. Um, we also need to know what services you intend to use um, and, and a rough budget for that. Um, we're interested in your ability to execute and we have a couple of questions on project team and, uh, and certain other elements. And we're interested in your timeline. So sooner is better for us, right? We have to make showcases. So the sooner you use these services, and get experience with the benefits that we can then translate into a showcase, the better it is for us. So uh, let's see, uh, then we need to know um, what type of funding and which funding tier uh, you're applying for. So as I mentioned before, we have the 100% funding and the 50% co-funded. Um, the funding tiers are the same for both uh, both streams, except that with the co-funding, uh, we're willing to put in more money if you're also willing to put in more money, right? So with the co-funded tier, you could have a project that can really uh, grow to a significant scale. A um, little bit on types of organizations. So we're looking for proposals both from single institutions, uh, collaborations between institutions, but we We'd also like to see proposals from yeah, S3's, ERIC's, NREN's, National Lean for Organizations, uh, discipline-oriented platforms. Um, those types of collaborations, from our perspective, um, are very interesting because they could mean an adoption amplifier. Right? If you have a pre-existing collaboration uh, that wants to make these services available to all its members in a certain way, then obviously that, that stimulates adoption quite a bit. Um, and last but not least, if you have some really good idea outside of these tiers or uh, boundaries, then please do apply or please do contact OCR. Our evaluation priorities are pretty straightforward and they're closely linked to the things we're asking for. Um, the most important is that we can see the impact of the OCR services on your research. Right? That's, that's the most important thing that we're looking at. The second important thing is, okay, so what is the showcase effect of the research that you're, that you're doing? Does it have a certain wow factor? Um, thirdly and fourthly, your ability to use the services and achieve impact in a relatively short time uh, and your ability to execute. Now, um, when I say ability to use services, right, that doesn't mean that your actual research project has to be finished within the next year. Right? Because from your perspective, um, you're after the publication. What we're after is your use of the services and how that benefits your research. So as long as the service consumption is relatively early, um, the publication could be way later. So that's all I had to say. Um, 